Welcome to Eloise Behind the Scenes. If you haven't seen my short yet, who hasn't let things get a little out of hand? You really should. Spoilers for Eloise. The first step of the process is to design my puppets. When drawing them, I referenced a lot of older style clothing, sheep, and cats. I also had to draw them to scale since I would be basing my puppets off of them. The second step of the process is making an armature. An armature is the skeleton of the puppet which allows me to pose them during stop motion. I use a mixture of thick armature wire and thin since the baby cat is much smaller. To strengthen that smaller wire and give it more grip so I can attach material to it a lot easier, I wrap the wire with another length of thin wire. One thing I also keep in mind is trying to keep my proportions consistent with my drawing by placing it on my design every so often. After finishing the torso, head, legs, and arms, it's time to bring out the two-part epoxy putty. To use this, I put on gloves and mix half of part A and part B until it was well combined. Then I put them on the torso and pelvis. The gloves made doing this very hard, but you can't handle it without them, so yeah. It's also a good idea to open up the windows, which I'm pretty sure I didn't do. After 24 hours of waiting, it's time to use the thin wire, I think gauge 30, to make the hands. After I get the wire on the hands, I put the putty on the hands again and wait 24 hours, but I didn't record that part. Today, we're making two Nellies. I already made the mom and the baby, which you will be seeing right now on camera. But now we're gonna make Nelly, and I'm gonna do everything I do. <laughs> when I do one to the other, I'll do it to the other. That doesn't make sense. I'm gonna cut the ears shorter of this Nelly, and then immediately after, I'm gonna cut the ears of this Nelly. Um, so yeah, I do one thing to this one, I do one thing to this one just to keep it nice and consistent. So let's do that now. This step involves building up the body with foam pieces I've cut and this great stop motion puppet glue, Uhu. Working on uh, the Nelly puppets right now. See, I'm sandwiching the foam in between them. I've got this, the legs on this one. And now I'm gonna do the same thing here, but I just thought I'd throw you a little bit more of the process. Alright, next step is felting. This stuff is wool. And I'm going to stab it with needles to make it nice and firm like this puppet. There you go, this puppet. Oops. So I'm going to start by taking some wool and I'm going to make kind of an egg shape around the head. Actually, let me get my reference up again. Stabbing the wool causes it to become firmer and doing both the mom and the baby off camera got me more comfortable with making the Nelly puppets. the base of the head. Now I've done it with the other head too. So now it's time to 
start shaping the head. Oh, this looks good. Okay, cool. I'm gonna do this with the other face and then I'll be back. But yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty sheep-like to me. Another part of this puppet making process is making the giant Eloise eyeball. Why, you might wonder? Because I have two shots that involve needing extreme close-ups for Eloise's eyeballs. The first step of the process is again, design. I referenced a goat eye and kept in mind how my puppets were looking. So I'm redoing the eye that I started. I drew this in, um, what's it called? Procreate. And now I'm taping it onto a piece of cardboard. The cardboard is the base for the two eyes. You'll see why I'm making two in a bit. But the plan is to bulk up the eye with tin foil, then cover it with semi-transparent clay that'll be easier to get the color I need. The reason I'm using tin foil is to save on clay and because I definitely don't have enough without the tin foil as this thing taking up space. So this process is going to be annoying. Now it's time to smooth all the lumps while, you know, avoiding the tin foil under it. I'm using some baby oil and oops, oops, I'm going to gently rub this. Next step I'm gonna work on is the nose. When making the nose, I start by drawing a V shape with the needle where the nose should be. Then I take some wool, color it with some Sharpie, and attach it to my puppets, using it to define the nose and make the mouth. Okay, so I've got the Copic marker here, and uh, yeah, these are both Copic markers. And I'm gonna really carefully go in there now and darken it a bit at the bottom. After that, I add a little gray splotch on top of the nose to add some interesting coloration. Using the same wool, I colored black with the shark. Okay, so I spent a long time trying to soften this clay. Didn't work. Not the, the clay you're seeing right now, but some other clay I was going to use. I hot glued the eye on both sides. And now I'm going to bring in some other clay here. And we're gonna make like the tear duct area and bake that. So let's do this now. I start by putting some soft clay inside the lines of the tear duct then sculpting it with a wooden clay tool. After baking the clay, I attach the tear ducts with hot glue.
think I hit the camera, but either way, your foot got in the shot, Jade, so take it out. <laughs> okay. Um, if I end up cutting out a lot of stuff, uh, what I basically did in the previous one is made like these little holes for the eyes. And I'm doing it on the side of the face. And uh, I put, I plop this in here. Get some extra fur there. And clap the ear. And actually, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Next, I continue to deepen the divots for my tiny eyes, then start building up the body. After I finish the body, I move on to the hooves. My original plan is to mix together an orangish brown and brown shade of wool for the hooves. So I got the little, <laughs> I shouldn't move them like that's hard for you to see. I got them. I made the little hooves. I decided to go with just the brown. Um, I'm pretty happy with them. And the next step is to do the ears and the eyes. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do the ears, I start by covering the foam with white wool. Then I roll up a gray ball of wool, which is white wool colored with Sharpie for my inner ear coloring, and stab it into place in the ear. After finishing the ears, I work on the tiny eyeballs for Nelly, using shades of orange going more yellowish as the highlights. First for the tiny eyes, then the bigger ones. Okay, so I painted the, uh, the eyeballs, and now I'm going to take my heater here, put it on the eye, and hope it can dry soon so I can put it down. Um, actually, I might, I'm going to start painting the pupils, to, not the pupils, um, the tear ducts, so I'm going to do that too. And, uh, yeah. After painting the tear ducts, I use coping markers to make the pupils on the tiny eyeballs.
Then I make the pupils in the big one using Copic markers and paint. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the gloss onto the small eyes. Also, this is the big eye fit. Oh, well, let me zoom out. This is the big eye. So I'm pretty happy about this. Um, yeah, it's nice and, and pretty dry. So I'm gonna put it over here. Ooh, okay, it's not fully dry. I'm just gonna <laughs> lean it against this over here. Next step is to make the tiny eyes glossy with nail polish. So this part I'm gonna do one side at a time because there's no way it's gonna it's gonna work um, to not do it this way. So let me get the Mod Podge here. I used to use brushes with this, but I find it's better for me to use paper towels, which I can you know not care about at all. I'll put you up there with my exacto knife. So dip it in this Mod Podge luster. And then, oops, okay, well, should put a paper towel under it, but I didn't do that. That's okay. Let me wipe you away. Okay, so I want to go thicker on the eyeball part, because that's the part that I really want to shine. And thinner on the tear duct part, so. Time to design the costume. With this part, my mystery sewing lead really took charge. She found and cut the patterns, and then after we chose the fabric, I cut them out and she started sewing. Here we see her sewing one of the Nellie's skirts. While the mystery lead sewer does her work, I get the lace to go around their necks ready. Taking a needle, I sew in and out of the lace, and the effect is when pulled, it looks ruffled. After I finish, the lead sewer would take her sewing machine and make sure the ruffles stay put. The lead sewer in the meantime works on the puppet's shirts. Now she steams the seams of the other Nelly skirt, then sews them together. Again, she steams the hem of the skirt and adds lace. She sews the other shirt. Then she makes the lace ruffles hold firm with extra reinforcement from her sewing machine. The mystery sewer then uses fabric glue to hold the front flaps of the shirt together and then it gets weighed down with sewing weights off camera. We learned an easier pattern for the cat mom that didn't involve the flaps but it was already too late with the Nellies. Okay, let's finish this. Thanks mom for your work. Now I can add the finishing touches. First, I start by gluing the cuffs on the cat mom with fabric glue. To do this, I had to hand sew a strip of white fabric to the cat mom because I am scared of using the sewing machine. Then I cut the cuffs to the right size and glue them on. Then I added a ruffled collar around the cat mom's shirt. I will also do this for both Nellies later off camera. Okay, so this puppet's almost done. Clearly I have to <laughs> fix it. Um, and I need to put one of its pads back on but the clothes is almost done which is really great 
I'm gonna leave all this to dry tonight, and then I'll fix the puppets. And then shooting's gonna. Oh. And then I'll add tinfoil in their skirts a little up high, so I can just kind of maneuver it a bit. And then shooting's gonna start tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Very excited. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited about that. Because, um, deadline's coming up. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, 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 I can do this, I can do this. All right. Next, as the text implies, I add tiny buttons to the cat mom using fabric glue. This was increasingly annoying and difficult, and I'm considering what I do next time. I actually have to uh, put them back on again upstairs using hot glue, and it was very difficult because I didn't want to use too much, and it, it was just, it was very annoying. I still don't know what I would do. Then I sewed the back of the skirt shut on the Nelly and add a waist to the skirt. It's at this moment I realize I need more of that blue strip fabric sewn together, and I decide I need to face my fear and use the sewing machine. With my mom's help, of course. I got it all lined up. We're gonna see my first ever sew. Uh I just sewed this. Um, I recorded it. Well, I thought I was recording it on my iPad. My mom helped me do it. It's more of the cuff, cause um, well, it's what I used around the waist here, and I'm gonna use it around here too. And I'm doing it for multiple dolls, so I need more. I learned how to sew something, so there you go. Next, I add the other waist to the Nelly, as well as the cuffs on her skirt. Then it's button time. Look at that beautiful TikTok reveal. So, I am incredibly happy how these outfits turned out. My mom 100% was the sewing lead with this and I was her assistant. Um, I added the little details after and I, I did sew one thing which unfortunately the camera did not capture, set it up perfectly, framed it all nice, and we lost memory. So right now what I'm gonna do is finish up the last steps of the dolls. One, one of the little kitten's paw pads fell off while we were doing this, so I'm just gonna let me make sure you can see, yeah. I'm gonna put it back on without any of the needle protective gear that I'm supposed to be wearing. Let me just sturdy that one up too. But I'm, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm excited and nervous to start filming. And um, I'm just gonna do this little part here while I'm waiting for my water to heat up. Because if I have not mentioned in previous videos, our water's not working. So we now bathe a uh, uh, cottage core style. Yeah. So I'm heating up water. And it takes a little bit of time. So the next step actually is to add tin foil to the insides of the skirts. And the reason we do that is so I can pose things. Like here, let me show you an example. I did this with the bed sheet. Oh wait. Did this with the bed sheet. Tin foil is inside the bed sheet, so now I can pose it for shots. Like if I want to have them, oh they're picking up the bed. I have to fix that too. Uh, let me actually fix that right now real quick. We're doing the last and final step, leg.
So now we're going to use sticky blood, which is this blood I got from this costume. I was like this uh, fish mutant creature. And I like the way this book looks. I used it on... Oh, actually, let me quickly show you the eye, because I'm sorry, I didn't record it. But here, here's the eye. Oh, here's the eye nice and bloody. Let me zoom out a bit. Here's the eye nice and bloody. <laughs> oh, fuck. Here's the other side. Nice and clean. I sprayed it with, um... I sprayed... The yeah, idea get shiny a couple times with this coat. My friend let me borrow it. This gloss. This glaze. And then I attach cotton balls. That's what the, the white stuff is there. I was going to try to use the felting, but I didn't have enough and it was just easier to do it this way. Okay. I'm incredibly happy with how these puppets and the eyes turned out. I was so nervous going into this, but I think all this hard work really paid off. If you like this video, you'll also like Eloise behind the scenes making a creepy farmhouse from scratch. But before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more notifications. And if you really feel like showing your support, you can join my Patreon, where you can get access to behind the scene art, time lapses, procreate, and PSD files. See you guys next time. Bye.